What's up everybody, I'm Caleb and I'm so happy you're here, but I've got a question for you. How do you handle stress? It's not fun to feel overwhelmed by stress and worry, but it's also not a bad thing to feel stress or worry. It just means you're human, like a real one, not a chatbot or AI app with great taste in shoes. You are a human and humans feel all the things, including stress and worry. This reminds me of something I was thinking about the other day. I have all these devices in my home that know a lot. Like I can ask my Amazon Alexa or Siri or AI anything and they seem to know the answer. So here's the question. Are you smarter than my AI? Hey Siri, do I have something in my teeth? I couldn't say. Why not? Why not what? This is going nowhere. Hey Siri, can you, are you listening? No. Hey Siri, can you bring me some candy? No, I can't. Why not? There's not always an easy answer. That was a horrible answer. Okay, hold on. Hey Siri, can you tie my shoes? Here's what I found. Oh, she's showing me YouTube videos of uh, soak your dirty shoes in this and watch them go clean. That's not what I asked. Hey Siri, can you grab me a glass of water? Hmm, I don't have an answer for that. Is there something else I can help with? Yeah, you can grab me a glass of water. I'm not sure I understand. It's just water, okay. Hey Siri, can you make me a nice dinner? Hmm, I don't have an answer for that. Is there something else I can help with? You can make me dinner. Our favorite AI friends know a lot, but they can't really do a lot to physically help us out. Although I did hear a story about drones dropping off bottled water to joggers to advertise Walmart's new drone delivery service. That's pretty crazy, right? I mean, sure, drones and AI are great, but I have found humans to be much more helpful, especially when I'm stressed or worried about something. So there was this time where I was a sophomore in high school, right? And my brother, my older brother, he was just a grade above me, he was a junior. We were coming back from track practice one day, we were starving, right? Cause we're, we're growing men, we're growing boys. We need, our, we need our protein, our nutrition, right? And you know, mom always says there's food at home and there's really just like some bottles of sauce, of barbecue sauce or something. So we're like, we gotta stop and get some food, right? But I'm a sophomore in high school. I don't have any money, okay? I've got birthday money and hey mom, can I borrow some money money, okay? That's like all that I have. I don't have a job yet. So we're going to stop for food and I've got literally $2 to my name and my older brother out of nowhere, he just turns to me, he's like, hey, what do you want? You know the feeling, right? You know the feeling where you, you, you want something but you don't wanna ask and then the person asks you about the thing that you don't wanna ask about and you're just like, yes! Okay, that was so loud, I am so sorry, but Food, right? Food is so exciting. And let me tell you, that that changed things for our relationship because almost every time after track practice, he would just ask me what I wanted to eat without asking for anything in return. And wow, when somebody goes above and beyond and does something for you without asking, that's incredible. But even when somebody just shows up and notices a need and helps you out, it's huge. And I'm sure you've been there too. We've all found ourselves in situations feeling stressed or worried and just needing a little help. Maybe you woke up late because your alarm didn't go off. Oh, I hate that feeling. You know, when you wake up and you're like, man, I slept well, that shouldn't have happened, right? <laughs> or your teacher asked you to talk about an assignment you forgot to do and you're just standing at the front of class like, uh, four score and seven years ago. <laughs> Maybe you worried about getting the class on time. You're just sprinting, sprinting through the halls or you broke your school computer. You were absent from school and came back to a ton of work. Your pet went missing. Fido! Your parents maybe told you to do chores on a night you already have a lot to do. I think it's safe to say that most of us have been stressed out or worried by similar things. And for a lot of us, things might be pretty okay most days. You might even be thinking, hey, I am not stressed or worried right now, so please stop talking about it because now I feel stressed and worried. Even then, stressful things do come up in our everyday lives. But have you ever wondered if God can actually help when we're facing worry and stress? Does God show up to help? And if so, how? There's an example from Jesus's life about a time when he was going through a lot. John was one of Jesus's closest friends and he described a time when Jesus was worried about his own mom. 
Here's what was happening. Jesus had just been put through an unfair trial. He was found guilty, even though he never did anything wrong and put on the cross to be crucified. Jesus knew he was going to die and he was worried about who would take care of his mom when he was gone. Take a look. Standing near the cross where Jesus' mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother standing there beside the disciple he loved, he said to her, Dear woman, here is your son. And he said to this disciple, Here is your mother. And from then on, this disciple took her into his home. Imagine what life was about to be like for Jesus' mom after he died. Why do you think Jesus was worried about her leading up to his death? In this moment, Jesus was going through a lot. He was worried about who would take care of his mom when he wasn't there anymore because all this time, he'd been making sure she was taken care of. What did Jesus do when he felt stressed and worried about it? He turned to one of his closest friends for help. He asked his friend to become the person who would take care of his mom. I think we can learn a lot from what Jesus did here. I think we can also learn something about God too. Just like Jesus' friend helped him when he was worried, God can use others to help when you are worried. So, how do you handle stress and worry that show up in your everyday life? Here are two things you can try. First, you can turn to others for help. God can use our friends, family, teachers, group leaders, coaches, and other helpful humans. I bet there are people in your life who want to help you. In fact, I know there are people in your life who want to help you. And second, you can look for ways to help others. One of Jesus' closest followers named Paul wrote a letter to people who followed Jesus in the early church. And I think we can learn something from what he wrote. Here's what he said. Carry each other's burdens and in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. Wouldn't our lives feel less stressful if we all follow Jesus by helping each other out? Like every day, wake up and look for ways to say, yes, Jesus, I'll help. It's kind of like Jesus' close friend I read about earlier. He said yes and took care of Jesus' mom. What if this week we look for ways to help in a similar way? Imagine if we all chose to say, yes, Jesus, I'll help. Following Jesus reminds us that God can use others to help when you're worried. Your group can be those people too. I mean, each week you get the chance to talk through stuff like this with people who not only want to help you, but who understand what it feels like to have things going on every day that you need help with. Maybe opening up to your group is a great first step for God to use others to help you when you're stressed and worried.